lovely stars shine lights my way to bed. Magic rainbows glisten in my head. Just like a child, I live in Wonderland. All my dreams are coming true. Hi, welcome to Handmade by Dixie Tulip. I'm Mel, and thanks for stopping by. In today's video, I'm going to share what creative things I've been up to over the last couple of weeks. I've got some sewing, I've got some woodwork, I've got some um, paper craft. So I'll start with the sewing because I know some people only visit my channel because you're interested in sewing. So I'll start with that side of things and if you're not interested in the other things then you can feel free to um, skip away. But if you're interested in having a look at the other things I've been up to then um, I'd love you to watch the video to the end. So sewing wise, um, I've actually made a garment, shock horror, it's been a while um, and it's the one that I'm wearing. Um, this is made from the Tilly and the Buttons uh, stretch striped jersey which is really nice actually, it's nice and soft. Um, the only thing to be mindful of, um, I originally was going to make something super fitted with this, the closet case netty bodysuit and when I'd uh, mentioned previously that that's what I was going to make somebody had commented to say that they'd heard that when this fabric has really stretched out you can see the white and the stripes um, and when I tested it you, you, you could more so on the darker colour fabric than on this white one um, but yeah I, I definitely decided to go for something which was um, still fitted but not as tightly fitted as the netty bodysuit. So this is the Jennifer um, Lauren handmade, oh, what's it called? Gable top, um, which I, the, the key <clears throat> feature on this is this slash neckline, which I really like. I really like the detail of the, of the neckline. And I've thought it's worked really, really well with this striped fabric um, because you've kind of got the horizontal horizontals going across all the way through the neckline as well. Whereas with a rounded neckline, you end up kind of cutting off part of the stripes. So really um, quick make, I have made a couple of these before um, and it is really um, quick and easy to do. And one thing I'm super proud of is my stripe matching. So let me just show you. So I've got the stripe matching down the sides, that side and that side. But what also happened by fluke if you can see the stripes go across the body and the sleeves as well and that was pure fluke I hadn't planned for that to happen but that's how it turned out oh one other thing actually on this um, I've kind of made a bit of a cropped in between sleeve and I really like to add a deep hem on this type of fabric so you can see the hem there on the sleeve oh no you can't see you can see um, the hem there on the sleeve is super deep and also you can see on the bottom I've also made a deep hem and I just find doing that just helps the fabric to not kind of scrumple up on, on itself or curl up with the deep hem and um, so that worked really well. So yeah super pleased with how this turned out I've just noticed I've got a bit of my breakfast down me so do ignore that stain. Um, yeah, really happy with this and I may make another version of this in the darker colour Tilly Buttons fabric that I've got like this as well. The other sewing thing I've been doing is a little bit more on the anorak, the closet case Kelly anorak. I've not done a great deal more, um, but I've done the side seams. I've done the side seams now and kind of top stitch them and I've added the drawstring uh, casing but I've only added it to that point yet because I've got to add my grommets so that I can thread it through and then um, gather that in and I need to watch my own video on YouTube to remind myself on um, how to use the presser machine for inserting the grommets so I'll get that done. The sleeves are also um, constructed and ready to set in um, so I'm ho hopefully going to spend some time on that this afternoon. So 
So that's the sewing that I've been doing. Um, I am going to plan on making a, another couple of garments soon. I've actually booked um, a couple of days away um, later in the year. So that's kind of motivated me to make a couple of garments. So I'm going to think maybe a nice top and maybe a nice dress. I've not thought about which ones yet. So I'll keep you posted on that going forward. So I'll share the other things that I've been making now for anybody that's interested in other stuff as well as sewing. I'm going to share some paper craft, or you could just see it peeking through actually. I've made these absolutely gorgeous um, crepe paper flowers. These turned out much better than what I expected. Um, they're much more realistic than what I thought they would. And I can't wait to make some more. Let me just bring them in closely and show you. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I used and how I made them. This one's a really full flower with loads of petals. This one um, is a little bit smaller. And then I've got a bud there as well. So the pattern for these is from my Leah Griffiths membership. Um, there's absolutely loads of um, paper flower patterns and instructions over on her site and it's a £10 a month membership but you're free to come and go as you please. So I um, joined membership around Christmas time when I was making some Christmas gifts. I then cancelled it because I wasn't using it and then I've just um, re um, set up my membership um, so that I can make some gorgeous flowers. There's other stuff on there as well, it isn't just flowers. I'll leave a link in the video notes if you want to head over and have a look. So this is simply made from crepe paper. So again this is from Amazon, it's the Leah Griffiths crepe paper. Can't remember exactly how much this was. Um, maybe about £15 or something like that, but you get loads in there um, and in each sheet there's, there's loads as well. Um, so I think you'll get a lot of flowers out of each pack. You can get um, extra fine crepe paper, which is what this um, flower is made from. I've also got a pack of heavy crepe paper for heavier flowers, but I've not um, made any out of that yet. And I just wanted to show you how you make the petals look um, realistic. So here's a petal when you first cut it out. Now I cut these out on the Cricut machine, but you don't have to. If you haven't got a Cricut machine, you can still make these. You can just cut them out by hand. Um, so you can see that's what the petals like when you first cut it out. Then what I've done is I've added a little bit of um, colour using a dry pastel and then all you do to make it look realistic you just need something that you can curl the paper with so I've just kind of got a little Cricut scraper here and I've just if you see me looking over here it's because I've got um, the screen projected onto my iPad so that I can see I'm in frames so if you see me glance away I'm just checking you can see me so just simply curl it round a little bit like that and then you simply stretch it stretch it all the way that it'll go but you don't stretch the very ends because you want those to kind of curl in and you don't stretch the bottom because you want that to sit on the flower. If you wanted more of kind of bucket petal, um, then you simply just curl the bottom bit as well. So you just take your time and stretch it out. And that's it. And then it looks much more like a realistic petal. And they were really enjoyable these because it's a bit like sewing where um, you're cutting out your pattern, you're getting your paper prepared or a bit like getting fabric prepared and then you're just kind of building them up step by step. So um, they were really therapeutic actually and um, quite enjoyable. They take a long time so they're not a quick project, they do take a long time um, but really worth it, really happy with how they've come out. I did make some other flowers as well, I've not got them here 
in person because they were a gift from a mum. I made some poppies. So um, I did take a little bit of video. So um, I'll snip that in in a second so you can see how they turned out. But with those, I didn't have the right colour crepe paper. So just to show you how versatile this is. What I actually did is cut it out in any colour crepe paper and then just coloured coloured it in um, with some alcohol based markers, these are pro markers um, and I used kind of a lighter colour all over the petal and then to make the definition kind of where the pollen goes I just used a deeper colour and again that made them um, turn out really realistic. So what I'll do is I'll just add that snippet of video in so you can see how the poppies turned out. So here are the mini little poppies that I've made for my mum. Um, so as I said, they're made out of crepe paper, but the crepe paper was actually the wrong colour. So I coloured it in using Pro Markers um, to this beautiful orange colour. And that was also good because I could then add the detail, making it a little bit darker in the centre. Um, they look quite realistic, I think. There was one thing that I did a little bit wrong. I was supposed to, before the glue dried, um, squidge that bit up so it was like a small bubble um, at the edge of the flower and I, and I didn't realise I needed to do that but then once the glue had dried it was too late. There they are. And you could even make them more realistic by perhaps adding a little bit of a brown tinge on some of the leaves and things like as if they're just starting to to turn and then the other things i've been working on is a little bit of woodwork some furniture miniature furniture for the doll's house this is my first one which is a vintage style fully functional kitchen cupboard. It's really cute, so the doors kind of slide open and shut, the drawers open and shut, and then I've got sliding doors at the top as well. Oh, that one's a bit stiff. Oh, those ones have gone a bit, there we go. sliding doors at the top there as well. So this was um, a tutorial by Little Bits and Pieces by Julie, I think a channel's called. Again, I'll add a link um, and she talks you through step by step how to make that unit and there's loads of other furniture that, that she's got on there. And they're made from real wood. Let me show you. So this is basswood, which is really soft. So again, you, you could cut it out on the Cricut machine um, or you can cut it by hand with a craft knife and then the pieces um, get painted and glued together. Um, so yeah, that kitchen unit turned out really well. And then what I'm gonna do is make some um, just of the base um, for a vintage style kitchen in the doll's house. And then another piece of furniture that I made was a bootcase. This isn't quite finished yet. Um, what I wanted to do is make the bootcase, um, but then I've kind of hand drawn on some flowers um, using the pro markers again, um, but I'm not quite um, happy with how that turned out. So you can see some at the side are a little bit fainter. That's because I'm painting over them um, to, to, to start again in some areas. So it's not finished yet, um, but this, kind of pretty much takes up the whole back of one of the rooms in the doll's house and then I'm going to make miniature books to fill that up, one of which I've made. I'm going to have to come in and show you this because it's absolutely tiny, but this is a tiny sewing book. So it's a simplicity sewing book and it's got real pages.
really tiny. So I got the design for this um, from Etsy. There was a, a set that I purchased when I first started um, renovating the doll's house last year, um, some kind of hat boxes and stuff like that, and this little book came with the set. And they're really easy to make. Again, you just cut them out with a craft knife um, and fold them kind of concertina-wise, and they work out really cute. And yeah, I'm, I'm gonna research how to make my own, so maybe take photographs of my own books that I've got in my own kind of full-size bookcase and then see if I can reduce them down to this 12th scale size. And I think that's everything. I've got everything laid out on the table, so I'm just checking I've covered off everything uh, which I have. So um, again, a, a busy couple of weeks um, crafting, not all um, sewing related, but I am starting to think more about making some garments, which is great, but it's been really good actually to get involved with some other um, crafty bits and pieces rather than just focusing everything on sewing. It's been really enjoyable. So what's coming up soon is this miniature elephant. So I'd mentioned in one of my previous videos that I'd ordered another um, kit to make a little um, stuffed elephant. That's arrived and I've started making this, but a few people said that they would love to see a tutorial. So I'm filming um, filming step by step as I make him. So it will take me um, a few weeks probably to get him completed. Um, so I will share that when that's done. Um, other than that, I'll drop back in um, either in a week or two weeks time, depending on how much crafting I do and keep you updated with um, what I'm up to. Do let me know in the comments what you're making at the moment. Are you sewing? Is there other crafts that you're involved with? And if you've got any questions about anything that I've shared, um, again, just leave it in the comments. Have a wonderful week and I'll see All you very soon. Bye. All my dreams are humming. All my dreams are